Yeah, anyway, very good afternoon. See, last class, uh, I mean, I'll just show you the slide we spoke. Okay, now before I show you the slide, what did we discuss in the last class? Pathogenesis of Silesia. Uh, we started with pathogenesis, but then uh, if I remember, we just touched one part. We spoke on action of Silesia and bones. Okay. And we also try to understand Silesia is more which miasm? Very good. Sorosyphilitic. Keeping the miasm in mind, it will also tell us the pathogenesis. That's what we discussed. And uh, we saw more of inflammation and we saw more of destruction. We saw more of caries, osteomyelitis. Okay. And then I also compared few remedies related to Silesia. And what we did was only uh, pertaining to bone. Okay. Now, apart from bone, yeah, probably this was the last slide so that you are in touch with what we did. Okay. And pteridion, what was the indication of pteridion in uh, osteomyelitis? Okay. According to Dr. Fatax, when nothing fits in, okay, when nothing fits in, in case of uh, pteridion, I mean in case of osteomyelitis, you would have tried different remedies and for some reason those remedies would have failed. Okay? And then Dr. Fatak says you can think of pteridion. And one more very valid point uh, what Dr. Sunil is, uh, Sunil is adding here is pteridion will also have sensitivity. What is it that is very sensitive in uh, pteridion is noise. They are very sensitive to noise. So this is all what we discussed. Now, uh, apart from bones, where else you see Silesia acting? Good skin. Yes, Dr. Shweta, GI skin. Huh? Glands, good. Glands are great. Huh? Periosteum, the bones we already finished. Now, what is it that we are left with? Apart from bones, what are all the other areas? Like GI uh, and of course, uh, glands. Then, skin. Yeah, very vital area. Okay, we will uh, slowly start with what you have contributed. Now, before that, one small area you also need to remember is Silesia has a very good action on the nervous system. In Asaram class, I have discussed in length for a PG scholar what could be the probable uh, CNS action and probable remedies. So I will skip the nervous system part, comparison part, at least here in Silesia. Out of in your interest, you can uh, see the lecture on Asaram. Okay. Now what will uh, Silesia do? Or what did Asaram uh, do there in the uh, class that we discussed? Acting on CNS, what will Asaram do? Asaram again, like Pteridion, it will act on the sense sensory part and it will cause exaggerated sensitiveness to noise. Good. Okay. We will focus on Silesia. See, if you remember, in the beginning, I told you Silesia is more nutritive. Fine. It will affect the nutrition. Nutrition of bones and nutrition of nerves. So, as a nutritive remedy which attacks the nutrition of the nervous system, what you see here is the direct effect will be, it will cause nervous exhaustion. What we commonly call it as neurasthenia, neurasthenia or nervous exhaustion. This is one area. Now, on a lesser note, you can also see paralysis in Silesia. So, nervous system, two things you will be expecting. One is neurasthenia and then is, second one is paralysis, paralysis. Okay. So, this is related to the nervous system. Now, we will come to what uh, Vaishnavi was trying to contribute. The action or the pathogenesis of Silesia on skin. This is a huge topic you would have already discussed. 
what do you think felicia is capable of acting on skin very good it can cause suppuration fine okay it yeah i'll come to that property of salicia a little later what uh, dr sunil is contributing it expels when it expels it has some property it has some usage we'll keep this point a little later now what you need to understand here is salicia has a speciality and now what is that speciality is it can produce abscess okay it can produce eruptions now when i say eruptions it is more general when you are looking at very specifically what are those eruptions salicia is producing that will become very important see each remedy based on its pathogenic character it can produce different eruptions okay fine now what is that this remedy is capable of is it is capable of producing producing pustules eruptions which are filled with pus abscess eruptions okay so for example there are uh, remedies where you see more of uh, vesicles coming up okay fine can you quickly recall some remedies yeah yeah one top remedy is restox one top remedy is restox okay so here you see more of uh, pus a second thing which is uh, exactly opposite here is it can give rise to killers fine killers killers hmm? and uh, from the experience of our seniors you know it is uh, a popular remedy for killer okay any other remedies that you can quickly recall yes. fluoric acid theocyanam could be i have no idea graphite is graphite is nitric acid silicia or three top remedies mentioned in your repertory three mark remedies of course you have got lot of uh, uh, you know rare remedies and theocyanam is one remedy they say which can absorb uh, uh, you know fibrous uh, tissue fine but practically i have not used so i can't comment fluoric acid is again a remedy fine which can which can uh, 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 cure killers fine so hardness see this hardness the killers also tells us the property of uh, uh, sand fine that you know sand it's very hard so hardening induration pus formation and see wherever you have pus okay one remedy that comes to our mind is silicia so for example you can recall many conditions now what is it that i am trying to show you here is a felon felon okay for example uh, you know uh, the nail bed if that is infected and if you have pus there fine you can think of silicia so felon or the skin in general in silicia will be very dry dry cracked skin the tendency for uh, pus formation that induration that hardening that keloid thing we saw and one last thing i want to comment here is its capacity to cure ulcers okay it can produce and it can cure ulcers and you know it's more uh, more syphilitic okay more syphilitic so these are few things you need to remember when we talk of uh, silicia acting specifically on the skin so now this part uh, you know we will discuss in depth in the next class at least let us finish the adding pathogenesis today okay so three areas to remind you one was the action on the connective tissue specifically bones apart from bones where else you saw silicia acting no 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 in the connective tissue we also saw that it has an affinity for ligaments and tendons hmm? okay where again in books they say it will cause destruction of ligaments and tendons then second thing we saw was on the nerves 
third we just uh, heard that salicia has a beautiful action on skin we'll go ahead and uh, anyway, animation has not happened see now uh, shweta was talking of his action on the mucous membrane she spoke of gi but i am generalizing it that salicia can or salicia has a very good action on the mucous membrane now one specific mucous membrane that you see here is mucous membrane of of git okay so what is the action now look at the uh, anatomy physiology try to understand what could salicia cause acting on the gi ha huh? okay nutrition chala chala nutrition good could be nutrition see uh, there will be problems with assimilation okay the absorption that there will be issues okay we will look at that part apart from that okay good ulcers yes good it, it can be a very good remedy for ulcerative colitis okay then see now what happens is we don't in homeopathy we, we don't uh, prescribe like that fine now i had a case i'll just share a small case it's got nothing to do with uh, silesia but bangalore uh, of late we are seeing lot of uh, uh, you know fever cases i don't know if they are covid if they are non covid but then lot of cases are coming up okay few they are getting tested okay few they are afraid to get tested fine few they getting tested it is coming negative but it is more like a viral thing fine now this boy you know young boy i will not take his name but a very young boy uh, four and a half five years old boy who was a very hyperactive child uh, two days back he landed up with uh, 103 fever and if you remember uh, two three days back that weekend saturday sunday you know father has tried with paracetamol unfortunately it has not worked so monday morning uh, he called now this boy was very hyper was very independent in fever he has become very uh, you know dependent meaning he wants his mother close he wants to hold his mother's hand and he is feeling cold fever is 103 and is very dull okay now you understood why i am giving you this uh, example a very hyperactive child like tuberculinum like tarantula in an acute stage he is a very different person so in organa and dr animana has told look at that acute state and prescribe some aphorism he says he might be so and so but now he is presenting to you like this the remedy will change now any uh, wild guess what could be the probable uh, remedies okay could be jalsimum very good could be jalsimum but why jalsimum okay dal drosy but one point i always insist when it has to be jalsimum what is that one point you need to remember that one point is heaviness of eyes i drooping of eyelids they feel very heavy the moment the jalsimum person enters your chamber you can make out he is jalsimum because uh, in some acute case uh, i have shared a video of one of my patient you know who had a drooping of eyelids when he entered you know so drooping of eyelids heaviness of eyelids that will go more in favor of jalsimum okay now what is this boy very good why samonyam okay see what happens in samonyam so samonyam is a very clingy person now why samonyam clings is also very important why samonyam clings samonyam clings out of fear okay fine here is not clinging to mother what is clinging getting stuck he is not getting stuck to the mother basically you have got the rubric wrong that's why all clingy remedies are coming up clingy is getting stuck but what is it he is doing he wants the mother to sit next to him ma don't go anywhere you please sit here no don't cook don't do anything just sit beside me okay now this is more of calcarea okay dull chilly thirsty and in the theory of acutes uh, vijay kasar has beautifully given same sentence he says that's what i have taken 
thanks to him and he says uh, you know uh, the child wants mother to sit next to him or hold hands sit next to him so a guy was given a very uh, destructive remedy remedied tuberculinum as a constitution he comes up in an acute state with a different uh, remedy fine so we don't have anything specific in homeopathy okay you prescribe as the case demands as the patient demands you prescribe that is what uh, dr animal says unprejudiced observer if for fever if you decide belladonna if for fever you decide aconite your practice will go into task homeopathy is a beautiful science now i'll give you the follow up of this case that gentleman very nice gentleman very nice father very caring father and you know he calls after two hours after calcara cup he calls and tells sir first time in last 48 hours the fever has come below normal meaning below normal means even with paracetamol it would be around 1900 it seems first time after calcara cup after a homeopathic remedy the fever has come down to 98.2 or 98.4 child got up he could eat okay and next day was absolutely fine back to his uh, original uh, uh, picture the yeah, tuberculosis picture you get my point so see when the parents call and tell no i mean you feel so nice because they are not uh, i mean they are they are, see how beautifully the father has observed what is the observation with paracetamol he was not fine he was not eating okay and after your remedy the fever has come down and he is eating see how intelligent that father is that he knows general should improve appetite should come up you know you are getting my point so never never fix anything similarly yesterday we had another case uh, i am i met to get the follow up by evening i'll get the follow up this was a case of a child you know two two and a half years old child high fever and uh, he was moaning in fever you understand moaning you make that piteous noise ayo amma that kind of thing so this child would moan you have a rubric mind moaning under moaning you have different sub rubrics okay so when is this child moaning fine so there is something heat stage there is something chill stage anything so during heat this boy would moan fine so that was one rubric i took moaning heat during or fever during and second thing when we looked at the cause he was apparently fine last evening and all of a sudden fever starts and fever is very high and one more symptom we took i am not able to recall in the repertory totality we had aconite we had pulsatilla and we had some other uh, thing fine uh, belladonna three remedies came up aconite pulse bell yeah three remedies now if it was pulsatilla how would pulsatilla child be i mean pulsatilla child would have been very cranky uh, they wanted to be carried and you know uh, clingy that kind of a thing but this child was absolutely moving around okay during fever he was dull but not necessary he wants mother father and all two and a half years old child he was playing with his brother 13 years old brother he was playing fine so now here we rule out pulsatilla because the child is not wanting to be carried the child is not clingy and keeping that suddenness keeping that high fever uh, the remedy given was uh, aconite okay so what i'm trying to tell you is aconite calcarea cap uh, you know uh, uh, pyrogenum asnekamal belladonna anything you have to be very very open then you know the remedies fall in line and the remedy should cover the acute totality some pq or something will definitely be there it is only our effort we should look for it okay see we can cut short viral fevers two days one and a half day one day they just vanish it's possible and when you don't give the right remedy then unnecessarily the fever continues okay fine so what i was trying to tell you here is why i shared these two cases here is please be an unprejudiced uh, observer fine the more you are prejudiced the more failures you have in your practice take it from me uh, this statement is uh, time tested 
told by many great homeopaths. Okay, I have taken it from them. So, talking about its action on the GA, mucous membrane of the GA, first thing what you see is it will cause inflammation. Okay, fine. And uh, when I got this picture, I had some expectation. And what is that I had here is, Silesia has more affinity for the lower bowel. Okay? What is that lower bowel I am trying to tell you here is, it's got more affinity for the rectum. Rectum. Again, anorectal diseases, homeopathy has got beautiful scope. Okay? And one such remedy, you will have to always remember is uh, Silesia in anorectal diseases. Okay? So what Silesia does here or for what conditions one can think of Silesia is also very important. So what are all the conditions? You can think of Silesia and fissure, fistula, perianal abscess. Yes, good, absolutely right. Perianal abscess, fissure, fistula, hemorrhoids. And uh, don't forget this, that this is also a very important remedy for constipation. Constipation. We'll discuss the character of stools in next class under the heading uh, PQRS symptoms. There are plenty of remedies in our materia medica for constipation. But Silesia has its own character. Fine? That's what I'm insisting. Each remedy will have its own character. Unless your remedy matches that character, it will not work. Okay? So, a very good remedy for constipation. Fine? These are few things you need to remember under the uh, lower GI. So, not only the GI, it also acts on the respiratory tract, the mucous membrane of the respiratory tract, the eustachian tube, the lungs. And acting on all these mucous membranes, it will cause excess secretion and it will also cause inflammation. Okay? It will also cause inflammation. That it will also cause inflammation. Now, uh, the uh, urinary tract. Hmm? Urinary tract. See, now here, I mean, plenty of cases. Uh, I just told uh, you should be unprejudiced. But uh, during my initial days of practice, when I was prejudiced, fine, uh, Silesia has done wonders. In uh, perianal abscess. Okay. When, I mean, Silesia has its own indication. I will tell you in the next class. When Silesia in perianal abscess. Okay. But in that stage, uh, Silesia does wonders. Okay. So similarly in fistulas, beautiful, beautiful remedy. Hmm? Fistula. And of course, uh, you know, likewise, some cases of kidney stones, if the uh, totality fits in. Silesia can do wonders. Renal calculi. Okay? Or in case of cystitis, inflammation. Not only the urinary tract, you also see Silesia acting on the female genitalia. Okay? Uh, here, it can cause, uh, you know, some inflammatory conditions and it can also produce Offensive leucorrhea, very characteristic. We'll discuss the discharges. And on the male genitalia, it will cause uh, excess sexual desire. Okay? So, this is with the sphere of action. Now, one last area that we'll uh, discuss in detail. That's the reason why I've kept it in the end. The last pathogenesis of Silesia. What is that last thing that you have to remember? You have already told. Eh? Yeah, what we have missed is glands. Good, glands, glands, glands. The lymphatic glands, okay. Now, Silesia is one remedy that should come to your mind when we talk of glands, okay. Now, we will uh, spend some 10 minutes here and we will try to understand like uh, how we did for bones. 
glands we have never explored in any other uh, previous lectures so we will uh, have a small interaction and then we can uh, stop okay now uh, i have already told you or you have given me me the fact that felicia is a glandular remedy okay now few questions comes up here when do you say a remedy is glandular first question or when do you take this rubric in your patient okay i mean these are all the practical uh, aspect of silicia and what are all the other remedies okay so we will uh, try to answer these questions and then we'll go ahead now what was that first question when do you say a remedy is glandular now in your repertory there is a rubric glands affection of okay is the rubric clear where do you see this rubric good under generalities chapter there is a rubric glands affections of practically tomorrow in your uh, clinic when will you take this rubric okay so vaishnav has a point when you have, see in the history you see that there are two or three more glandular affections okay fine in such conditions you can take that this person needs a remedy which is glandular okay so for example he had tonsillitis fine now she uh, comes to you with uh, goiter or she also has pcod okay so when you see that there is an affinity for glands then you can take that rubric glands affections of okay now uh, a question what is that question which are all the other remedies which are all the other remedies very good uh, conium iodum good calcarea phytoleca absolutely see there are some 44 or uh, 34 remedies okay you can uh, either answer all of them or yeah the list will uh, get shortened so for you are given you also know silicia is also a glandular remedy we have five bromium spongia yeah, very good tuberculinum calcarea under calcarea are so many ala it could be simple calcarea cap it could be calcarea floor or it could be calcarea iode yes agreed even calcarea self yes calcarea self we'll discuss okay any other remedies very good carbo animalis aurum could yeah huh hepar yes absolutely right hepar something you are missing you are told hepar you are told uh, silicia there something in between mark 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 don't forget mark okay mark again a very important remedy acting on glands i have a beautiful case too early to share and too early to celebrate it will take some time but uh, mark was given a salt of mark was given not mark salt mark iodum flavum okay mif what is the difference between mif and mir which is right and which is left mif is right mir is left okay so this lady had uh, she was given mif we'll discuss the case some day but i want to insist the fact that mark mark iod rubrum mark iod flavum or sorry flavors they are beautiful remedies acting on the glands phytoleca spongia okay sisters canadensis you used bromium did you mention yes bromium okay lapis alba i mean lot of remedies okay so we have oh, what is this my this will not be fun i mean i uh, i have not done animation okay so without animation it will not be i mean i don't know some of 
I just prepared, so I forgot to do the animation part. Okay. Now, which are all the other remedies? Remedies you have given. Fine. Now, the next question is, what can each of these remedies do acting on the glands? Because if I show you the next slide, then it is, uh, you know, all exposed. There will be no fun. Okay. Yeah. There are remedies which can cause uh, hypertrophy. Very good. Inflammation. See, we can also go a step ahead and we can look at the miasm. If it is soric, it is more of inflammation. If it is psychotic, you will have more of, uh, you know, uh, hypertrophy, hypertrophy. And if it is more syphilitic, then you will have more of ulcers, good, or then you can have more of malignancies. Correct, no? There can be malignancy of tumor also. So suddenly I got this thought that, you know, acting on the glands, depending upon the miasmatic influence or the miasmatic background, a remedy, if it is more soric, it can cause inflammation. See, but a remedy will not always limit itself to a single uh, miasm. Okay? So it can be soric or it can be predominantly soric or it can be predominantly psychotic or predominantly syphilitic. Correct? Huh? So based on the miasmatic uh, background, you know, a soric uh, remedy will cause more of inflammation. And a psychotic remedy can cause more of uh, hypertrophy. And a syphilitic uh, remedy can cause more of uh, ulcerations. Anything else that you can think of? Only uh, what? Inflammation, ulceration, hypertrophy. Induration can also happen. Anything else related? To good. Suppuration. Beautiful. One small thing you have missed. One small thing. Huh? What is it? Correct. Very good. What is it? Atrophy. Good. That's, that's, uh, that's the thing I wanted. Atrophy. See, glands can also go into atrophy. Allah. Fine. Okay. So this is what, according to Vijay Karsar, is hypopsychosis. Hypopsychosis. Okay. So atrophy, hypertrophy, inflammation, ulceration, induration, suppuration, cancer. Fine. Now this slide is all about those things. I wanted to keep this open for discussion, but unfortunately, it's all uh, there. Okay. Wait. So. Action of a remedy based on its miasmatic affinity, it could, it can cause uh, inflammation and the predominant glandular remedies which can cause inflammation will be belladonna, calcarea carb, murk, phos, sulfur and baratamir. See, if you ignore this and if you can think of some remedies, afternoon class will be more uh, interactive. Don't write, don't look at the board. Uh, your teacher is exposing everything and he's got confidence in you and is telling, you know, don't look at the screen, you answer and when you answer, I, I tell, very good. Okay, very good. So, which are all the remedies which can cause suppuration, acting on the glands? You know all the suppurative remedies. Hepar, it could be silicia, it could be murk and calcarea sulf, very important remedy. Calcarea sulf, phosphorus lacasis. Okay. See, many times, you know, Quincy, we have uh, kids coming, we have elders coming with Quincy, fine. Hepar, phytolaca, lacasis, based on the side affinity. Lacasis, you know, they do wonders. Hmm? They do wonders. I had a case of a lady, an elderly lady, the entire upper palate and deep inside, till esophagus, there is candidiasis. They have done endoscopy. This elderly lady is not able to talk, not able to swallow. The entire thing is all reddish and it's all, uh, you know, uh, there is uh, what? Uh, candidiasis. Fine. That's what the endoscopy report says. And this lady uh, with uh, a dose of protellus horridus, 
she beautifully improved okay so i had taken some rubrics fine and one more contributing factor here was she landed up with all the complaints after vaccination the second dose of vaccination fine not everybody will react few sensitive constitutions will react to vaccines so unfortunately she was one of those sensitive constitutions she came up with bad thing okay and uh, crotalus horridus you also know is a beautiful remedy for bad effects of vaccination so with uh, a dose of crotalus she nicely improved uh, with the uh, candidiasis part she was able to swallow i have a recording she was not able to talk she beautifully improved okay so what i was trying to tell you is suppuration lacasis never forget phytolaca never forget uh, peritonsillar abscess baretta carp beautiful remedy you should never miss all these remedies fine see now these are the cases if they go into the hands of uh, the ent fine a genuine ent person may still give some antibiotics and uh, send them but otherwise they unnecessarily go for uh, surgery okay which you as a homeopath can prevent a child going into surgery okay so suppuration was this if the glands go into induration don't look at the board again uh, i mean uh, the animation spoiled the fun now what is this induration if the glands go into induration what remedies come to your mind ha huh? carbo animalis good carbo animalis carbo animalis will discuss then simple ha huh? phytolaca conium aram bromium see bromium shweta remember or remind me when i am telling you in the next slide i have something nice to share about bromium okay so okay induration bromium hmm calcarea flor you can't forget calcarea flor okay so bromium badiaga calcarea flor calcarea car carbo animalis clematis conium iodum phytolaca spongia if they go to the extent of malignancy okay what are all the remedies that come to your mind glands going into malignancy carbo animalis top remedy carbo animalis good apart from carbo animalis okay conium astera rubens fine and you also have uh, sisters canadensis a rare remedy but remember sisters canadensis salicia lapis alba now generally lapis what do we know about lapis i mean lipoma yeah yeah good in our uh, initial stage we used to i mean at least i used to abuse lapis for uh, case of lipoma but unfortunately at least i did not get uh, the desired uh, results fine i again specifically use i did not get must be others should have got but for me constitutionally remedies have done wonders uh, in case of uh, lipoma now lapis alba what is it that you have related to glands huh? okay more than soft swellings see now one thing you re- have to remember in lapis it mainly affects the cervical group of lymph nodes and one author i was reading i don't know who it is but then he says it will be arranged like necklace it seems the arrangement of the enlarged glands will be almost like a necklace okay lapis alba fine and uh, yeah we'll come to the next part last part atrophy which are all the remedies which can cause atrophy of glands iodum very good iodum now what we know about iodum is all glands except mammary gland all the glands except mammary gland they go into atrophy iodum good other than iodum any other uh, remedies you can think of atrophy atrophy so another very important remedy is the kali groups and more so is kali iod okay kali iod atrophy of testicles 
kali ayur whenever you are talking of atrophy one more remedy should come and that remedy is plumbum plumbum metallicum there again you see atrophy atrophy of testicles okay so plumbum conium iodum kali group in general and kali iod in particular and you also have plumbum and baratacap baratacap this of few remedies see if the next thing is also not animated then okay chalo i mean yeah okay fine now uh, can we have uh, or we will take some four five remedies and we'll discuss now before i take the remedies and we discuss any questions now we have tried to understand a homeopathic remedy acting on a gland based on its miasmatic affinity based on how deep acting it is it can cause inflammation you know it can cause swelling it can cause suppuration it can cause induration it can cause cancer it can cause ulcers before that and it can also cause atrophy and i've given you the list of remedies okay now before we close we can out of this many remedies we can take up some four five remedies and we can understand we can compare okay so what remedies you want to take up for comparison bromium okay good bromium only bromium carbanimalis yeah, i mean any remedy but i have few for you here now what will be the indication of bromium i know there is some technical issues so bromium when do we think of bromium ha huh? goiter okay see bromium we can do one uh, simple exercise remedy which glands it affects and what exactly it does so bromium can affect thyroid gland good then only thyroid bromium see whenever you say bromium okay what is bromium halogen good it's a halogen and one of the important uh, generalities of uh, halogen is it acts on it has an action on the glands which are all the other halogens which acts on uh, glands iodum okay bromium iodum okay fluorinum okay chalo so at least these two remedies they act now uh, bromium for you whenever we say bromium what should come to your mind is parotid gland okay bromium has a special affinity for parotid gland the salivary gland so parotid gland the thyroid the mammary gland the testicles okay now what is the beauty of bromium which i was trying to tell shweta also here is bromium glands go into induration they seldom suppurate you are getting my point what is that point in bromium the glands will indurate but they seldom suppurate having taken uh, the halogens after bromium you also have spongia okay fine now what will happen in spongia spongia the leno which gland spongia affects spongia also has an affinity for thyroid thyroid and testicles ovaries so you should know which organ a remedy has a capacity to affect very important now in spongia when you talk of goiter what is very characteristic very good good ilam has a point here she is showing with her hand fine good so what is it see it may not be this big it might be a little exaggeration but what you need to understand here is the enlargement is so big that it can cause suffocation what do you understand going back to your medicine knowledge what is it here yes bromium sorry uh, spongia it is causing pressure effects it is compressing and it is causing pressure effects so large swellings heart swellings of goiter and testicles you can think of spongia okay so other remedies for example uh, you are talking of iodum what is it in iodum again a halogen iodum 
I used Pandya Salajan, that was wrong. I wanted to talk of Ayadam. What happens in Ayadam? Huh? Ayadam Allah has told you, you have more of uh, uh, atrophy, fine? Atrophy of all glands except memory gland. And they are all indurated, very important, okay? So, hardening. Now, apart from Ayodam, if you look at, you can also talk of uh, carbo animalis. What is special about carbo animalis? I will again uh, show you this slide and I will read it, but for the understanding, which gland carbo animalis affects? That is the first question. The gland it affects will be axillary and inguinal lymph nodes. Axillary and inguinal lymph nodes. And the lymph nodes are very hard. Hard like stone. In brackets, in brackets, calcarea floor conium. Hard like stone. Stone. Okay. So that is uh, uh, carbonimalis. Glands which go into malignancies. Carbonimalis. Carbonimalis. Okay. Calcarea cap. Which glands? Huh? Yes, good tonsils, lymph glands, mesentery glands. And surprisingly, the only remedy mentioned in your synthesis repertory, affections of pituitary gland. The only remedy given in our repertory is calcarea cup. Affections are complaints of pituitary gland. Complaints of pituitary gland, only remedy is calcarea cup. So what will calcarea do acting on these glands? It can either cause inflammation or it can cause induration. It is here. So inflammation and induration is what you have in calcarea carp. Okay? Calcarea carp. And uh, likewise you have another remedy here and uh, that is silesia. See here you can just read, I have written, you know, uh, calcarea carp lacrimal, cervical, inguinal, pituitary, only remedy, parotid, they are swollen and they are inflamed. Bromium, lacrimal gland is swollen and there is lacrimation, only remedy. Lacrimal gland swollen accompanied with lacrimation, only remedy given in, in our source books. Glands with which will hardly suppurate. And I have told which glands it will affect. Okay? Bromium, we saw spongia, thyroid, testicles, hard and large. We spoke of carbonimalis. Now the last important will be silesia. So when do you think of silesia? When do you think of silesia in glandular affections? Or which glands? First question. Which glands? Again, all your lymph glands, the tonsils, okay, axillary, inguinal, fine, all the lymph glands, cervical group of lymph glands, okay, and then what will it do acting on the glands? It can cause inflammation or it can cause suppuration, good, suppuration, okay. So, glands which are indurated and which are suppurated. Lacrimal glands inflamed and swollen, only remedy. Lacrimal glands inflamed, there is swelling with lacrimation. The remedy is bromium, bromium, bromium. Hmm? Okay. So with this, we will uh, officially end uh, the pathogenesis of silesia. So under pathogenesis, what did we speak? We spoke of... Uh, action of silesia on bones in the last class and in today's class we spoke of CNS. What is the action of uh, silesia and CNS? Yeah, it, it causes nervous exhaustion and it will cause paralysis. Second thing we saw was skin. Skin will have plenty of things. Starting with simple things it, it cause abscess and apart from abscess we also saw uh, uh, the tendency for pus, okay, fell on, and even nail, 
you'll have a lot of things in uh, Silesia related to nail. We'll discuss in next class. And uh, uh, keloid, ulcer, hmm? cracked skin was under skin. And then we saw under uh, uh, mucous membrane. Acting on all mucous membrane, it will cause excess secretion and inflammation. We specifically focused on J. And on J, again I told you, Silesia has an affinity for the lower bowel. Okay, the large intestine and of course the rectum. Hmm? And after GI, uh, we spoke was uh, urinary tract. It can cause uh, inflammation or stones. And then there we uh, discuss the male and the female genitalia. Okay. And the last part we spoke was uh, glands. Glands we spoke uh, in detail. What we mean by a glandular remedy. When is a remedy called a glandular remedy? Fine. And uh, what could be the probable uh, action of a remedy acting on a gland? The other remedies and uh, their affinity and of course Silesia in, in detail, this last part. Okay. So anything I have missed or anything you would like to add? If there's nothing to be included under pathogenesis, uh, next class hopefully I, I, I was planning for uh, either mind or uh, the but I mean the characteristic symptoms of uh, Silesia will will decide. Okay, hmm? mind might take two or three hours. We'll see based on the mood and uh, based on the enthusiasm. We'll decide what to do. Okay. Any questions before uh, we close? Anything to ask? Nothing. Hmm. Correct. Okay. So what Elam is uh, trying to know or trying to ask us is you have told the action of uh, any remedy on gland and we uh, on this part decided it is inflammation, it could be what swelling or it could be induration, it could be suppuration, it could be ulceration or it could be cancer, that growth or it could be atrophy. And based on our knowledge of myasm, we are trying to classify them into soric, psychotic, syphilitic. Okay. Now there is something called as blended miasm, fine, uh, where the sora can blend with psychosis or the psychosis can blend with syphilitic. So it could be either purely soric, psychotic, syphilitic or few of those can be soro syphilitic or psycho syphilitic, that combination can also come up. For example, you know the tumor part, fine, that could be more psychosyphilitic fine ulcer is purely syphilitic inflammation is purely soric okay but other things read the uh, clinical manifestations read the miasm characters and then you start matching see miasm is a controversial thing we'll go to what dr haniman has told what the you know, founder has told, the source books have told, and accordingly we can uh, come to a conclusion. Okay? And Dr. Animan has told basically about only three miasms, if I am right. So, though a lot of advancement happened, a lot of miasms did come up, but when it comes to miasms, we stick to these three miasms. Fine? Soric, psychotic, syphilitic. Okay. Yeah, anyway, it was a good uh, question. Yeah, anything else? Done? Okay. If all fine, we'll stop. Okay, thank you.